We are Trenton Alley and our construction site is slowly transforming into a house. Was it a worthy purchase? Absolutely. Okay. Every tool is a worthy purchase. Oh my gosh. The kitchen cabinets are looking beautiful. I want to be able to take a nap on it. Like after <laughs> I eat a sandwich, I want to be able to just like roll up onto the <laughs> island. It's all nice and cold. <laughs> and the roof is starting to take shape. The day that we decide, like, hey, let's get up on the roof, it's like, bam, 95 degrees. Our pregnancy is more than halfway over. We're a little nervous because Allie is not feeling him move as often. And let's just say we have our work cut out for us. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a hardened baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> What's up guys and good morning. Welcome back. We are really excited to be getting started today. We do have to actually go to the doctor's office before we can start working on the house today, which is also exciting because we haven't seen our little ginger snap for like over a month now and we're basically gonna go in and hopefully do a little ultrasound and make sure everything's good and tracking and excellent and awesome. And I'm sure it is. And so after we get done with that, we're gonna be coming back here and we're gonna be Finishing the kitchen cabinets and finishing as much of the roof as we can all today and tomorrow. And, and maybe we finish all of it and I don't even know what we're going to do next because that's really exciting. Maybe we'll be buying tongue and groove and starting on the ceiling. Maybe we'll be going to your grandparents' house and getting our refrigerator and all of our appliances and putting it in the kitchen and making breakfast in our kitchen. Can you believe we're saying that? That's not going to happen. Maybe, I know, but it sounds it first. sounds really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, our friend John Scott is actually going to be coming up here, and he's going to be taking all the measurements to put in our countertops, and he's going to be taking the measurements to put countertop in all of our window sills. <sighs> it feels like we're making a lot of progress, probably because drywall just took so long that like everything else will feel fast, I think. But it's really moving along, and we're really happy. Um, also, we're really late and we need to get to the hospital, so we're gonna hit the road. So today is our 24 week checkup appointment with our OBGYN at the hospital and things have been going really well the last few weeks. The first trimester was just so terrible that I think everything in comparison feels like really smooth sailing, which we're very grateful for. And so far I haven't been feeling terribly except for some joint pain in my hips, which has been kind of killer and very painful when I'm walking, but um, kind of the least of the problems that you can have overall in terms of there being anything wrong with this baby or myself. So I'm feeling good and I'm hoping that today um, we'll just be able to like kind of have a chat and start to plan out a little bit more with the doctor, our plan for delivery and uh, what that all looks like because it seems like now <sighs> that's, uh, that's the next big hurdle is having this baby. <laughs> so we've gotten this far, things are looking good and I'm just excited to enjoy the next few weeks and get prepared as much as possible before he arrives. <laughs> just like coming here especially if we're gonna do an ultrasound today which I'm not sure if we are gives you like a little bit more insight into how the baby's doing and you can see him and see him moving around and just like talking to the doctor about baby things makes it all feel super real and it's just really exciting and especially the fact that we're not here for an emergency today icing on the cake <laughs> we're a little nervous because Allie is not feeling him move as often hopefully today we get an ultrasound done and everything is a-okay heart rate's great no umbilical cord issues and we can go back to building the house you're more than halfway there i know it's crazy do you feel movement so okay i felt it super hardcore for like 20 to 22 weeks yeah and now not so much like it's gone i don't know okay. so that's why i was asking maybe if we can get an ultrasound today just to make sure sure oh thank you <laughs> let's see if it's available okay okay, okay. <laughs> yeah hold on 
Yay. <laughs> we love our doctor. <laughs> no over bleeding or cramping anymore. All of that's thank goodness. Done. Yes. I mean, enough of that drama. Yes. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> I'm fine, Mom. I'm totally fine. Okay. Do me a favor. Turn that light off right behind you. Yes, thank you. There's the head, there's the face. A little bit of a profile. Not yeah. perfect. You can see the jaw. Sometimes they open up and then you can see a tongue stick out. Oh, really? The spine in the back and then you can see the ribs coming off of the spine. That never gets a long time. I know. <laughs> so great. It's good. It's just nerve wracking. Everything looks good. He's totally fine. His heart rate looks good. Um, you know, there's a lot of fetal movement variability in the second trimester or second half of the second trimester. So it's totally fine to have um, differences in the patterns of the movement. So that's not a concern. Now we're starting to talk about delivery and the protocols and what might happen. This is actually considered a rural hospital. So there's lots of transfer protocols and guidelines in place. There's no NICU here. So we were just starting to talk through like, oh, backup options and worst case scenarios. They have everything in place if something happens, but starting to mentally prepare for like what the contingencies could be, but they won't be. Everything's going to be fine and smooth. <laughs> We're keeping it positive. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. I was going to carry full term. The house is going to be done. We're going to be bring baby home to the house. It's, it's going to be great. Yeah, I agree. Smooth sailing, positive thoughts. We're going to get cleaned up, get out of here and work on our kitchen. <laughs> we'll see you guys back at the house. It didn't take more than a second for you to turn a whole world upside down. back around Had you been watching and waiting From some place up above Somehow knowing In this place All these people I'll find all right, we made it back to the house. Everything has gone really well this morning and we are hoping to just like, keep that positive momentum. Uh, the base cabinets are fully installed. They're not going anywhere. And tomorrow, a friend of ours is actually coming up to measure for the countertops on the base cabinets. But until then, we need to finish installing the island. So now we've cleared the whole kitchen area. We're getting ready to stage the cabinets where they need to go for the island. Now is when we start to see how small our kitchen really is. <laughs> Forty-two. So that is our forty-two measurement. Okay. Thirty-nine and a half. Minus an inch and then an inch. What's the overhang? An inch and a half always? Inch and a half. Well, minus three inches then? It'll be an inch and a half here, so you'll have three quarter on the face of your doors and okay. your drawers and stuff. Okay. But then a full inch and a half here. I mean, he could do three quarter, he could do whatever you want. It's too many options. Yeah, there are way too many options. <laughs> it all depends on what you want it to look like, too. I think it looks better with the overhang. Yeah. All right, things are moving right along. Don't, don't, don't bother uh, noticing my dog scratching in the dishwasher hole. <laughs> we've got this cabinet mounted. We've got all the rest of the cabinets mounted. We literally just have to put a two inch filler piece here so that we have some space next to the dishwasher for install and removal. A filler piece here. 
I'm not even going to talk about the upper cabinets because you guys already know it's a mess. We're going to have to go to Home Depot and get some new stuff ordered. These are the cabinets for the island. Now, yes. you might not know, but I've noticed right off the bat, maybe you like think it's a, a shadow difference or something, but these cabinets are actually a different stain. They're a darker stain. They're a different style of cabinet. These are lighter in a different style of cabinets. Give a little two-tone effect because a lot of the other stuff in here is just going to be like a classic white minimalist look. So this is our island cabinets here. And now we've got the face plates of all four of these cabinets mounted together. These two cabinets are uppers, but this is kind of what they do in an island to extend an island is you use upper cabinets and then you have to build a base mm. for them to sit on because they're a different height. And depth. And depth. Everything. Yeah, because if we just put another set of lower cabinets right here, this island would be like a... 10 by 12 piece of granite and it would freaking weigh, it would probably break a hole in the floor. That's exactly what would happen. <laughs> but that's the size island you want, I do. I do, I wanna be able to take a nap on it. Like after I eat a sandwich, I wanna be able to just like roll up onto the island. It's all nice and cold. Anyway. Flatten out your back. Yes, yeah. <laughs> after my back's been all contorted from working. Uh, so these two cabinets here, we've got to build a little rectangular base for them to sit on, mount that to the floor, mount them to the base, mount them to the back of these cabinets, and then we'll be ready to have the guy come and measure for the countertops. And then we can start finishing the roof. It's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. You guys got this? I think so. of yourself over here because of my gun because of your electric automatic golf gun yeah, it already looks like it's a year old because it's got so much junk all over it <laughs> and it's been getting its use that's for sure was it a worthy purchase absolutely okay every tool is a worthy purchase. oh my gosh <laughs> we've got a long base built. This is what our toe kicks are basically going to, our toe kick decorative stuff is going to mount on. <laughs> and it's glued down, it's screwed down, it is as solid as anything in this house. And now we're going to take these upper cabinets, put them on that base, and what is going to happen is the top cords of both cabinets are going to get screwed together and they will become one piece. Imagine me like coming over here, sitting down. Trent says, would you like some coffee? And I say, sure, thank you. And then we just drink our coffee. It's so beautiful. I think it's gonna be really nice. We need to uh, lose a little bit more space once the countertops come in, but it's only gonna come like out to here. So you'll still have a pretty decent walkway, which is what I was really concerned about. But look at all the storage. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> This is like three times the kitchen storage we've ever had in the van and Terry and even our old house combined. It's true. We've got a lot of cabinets, a lot of counter space, a big fridge. It's like, it's going to be really cool. I'm really excited. I think today we might actually even go to my grandparents' house and maybe get like the oven and the microwave and the dishwasher, like anything that's like small that I can grab and we can bring up here, we might bring up and maybe start trying to like mock up and get installed. We just can't really get the fridge like in the truck. And so we either have to have movers bring it up here or we have to rent a U-Haul, probably about the same price. So we'll probably just 
pay movers and then they'll move it into the house for us too. I don't know. Hopefully the fridge gets here soon because I would really like to have a big fridge. Whether we're living in here or not, I just want to plug it in and have a big fridge you can get water out of and just, you know, all the like basic amenities that most people have. Looking forward to those. Would be nice. I'm looking forward to those. <laughs> Up wrapping up for the day, getting a lot done in the kitchen. We're gonna save the roof for tomorrow, but we have one more stop to make before we call it a day. We're gonna go see some people I know you guys love. How are you guys doing? We're doing fine. Good. Woo! I was talking to uh, Aunt Kathy last Sunday, you know, her fridge ran out. Oh. She had to get new one and so forth and so on. And I said, well, I said, if you lived up here, I said, we'd give you the one we have in the garage. <laughs> it was just dead silent. <laughs> she says, mother, what are you doing with the fridge in the garage? So I briefly told her what funny. was going on. <laughs> So we put in a full day's work today. We got a lot done. Now I'm showered and cleaned up and we're actually heading out to dinner. And we know that Terry is going to be safe while we're gone, thanks to Simply Safe. And Simply Safe is the sponsor of today's video. Please exit now. Simply Safe is an effective, reliable, and safe home monitoring system. Order it online and install it yourself. You can customize options like motion sensors, cameras, a remote, and door sensors. Simply Safe on. And it all ties into your keypad and home base. All right, so if you guys are in the market for a home security system, I highly recommend Simply Safe. Not only does it come with the camera where you can always tune in and see what's going on, but it comes with the easy to use remote. I absolutely love this system. So if you guys are interested in checking them out, click the link in our description. You guys will get 20% off and your first month of free when you guys try out their interactive monitoring system. Thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. We're gonna go get some grub and we'll see you guys in the morning. What's up guys? Good morning. Uh, Brandon and I are just up here on the most terrifying amusement park ride you've ever seen. Ugh. This thing like kind of threatens that it's going to tip over what? the majority of the time that we're like in the air. I haven't really told Allie about this because I know she would just worry, but basically I feel like this thing's going to tip over because the dirt is kind of soft down there. So the nerves are high and we're working on the roof. We got the first little starter panel up. We got one screw in it and we're realizing that Without Sean, this is going to take a lot longer. So <laughs> we are going to put our heads down. We're going to grind. Allie's going to do most of the commentary today and we're just going to work our butts off. As long as you just be safe. Take as long as you need, just be safe. Not the brave kind, never dare to Take the leap when the chance is coming You are special, ordinary Can get you out of my mind I'm gonna I'm not up in the bucket. I've got to be down here doing the most probably tedious labor intensive part of a metal roof. And that's this like metal origami that has to happen at the bottom of the roof so that the panel can actually be hooked on to the drip edge without any screws. So I have to start by cutting up one side over here. These panels of uh, these panels have previously been measured. So there's a one and three quarter uh, distance here, one and three quarter distance here, and then a one inch line that we've dotted along the bottom here. So basically, cut off that little tab over there. I cut this piece back, and I actually saved that piece right there. This gets cut at an angle. 
And then on this side, we cut up to our one and three quarter mark. And these are marked with pencil, so maybe you can't see them on the, on, the, on the TV and you're wondering what marks I'm talking about, but they're there. So that gets cut like that. And now this is basically all the cutting that needs to take place. And then we have to come along with the hand seamers and start our bends right here. And if you don't, so I have two different hand seamers. I have these little hand seamers that only bend a little bit. Then I have these big ones that bend the whole thing. But if you just start out with the big ones and you try and bend them without like setting that crease with the small ones, the bend is never straight. And then your panels are crooked. And we learned that on the sunroom. We have some crooked panels. So after I do all that, I clamp this. Now if you look underneath, there's this crease and that the drip edge has like a sharp edge on it. So when this goes on the roof, it slides into that the uh, the edge that's on the roof, the drip edge, and then this gets clamped down with the hand seamers. And then this can't go anywhere. You screw or you uh, screw this all the way up to the roof, and then this side is like a, a channel, and this side is like a, a ridge, and they snap together. So this one snaps on, this side screws on, that clamps on and gets pinched, and then this little tab right here bends over and covers the edge of this ridge of the next panel. And that's how you have no screw holes in your entire exposed roof. Yep, and then at the very top there's some screws, but there's a cap that goes over it. So any snow or water or rain or dirt or anything that gets on this panel, there's no obstructions for it to just slide straight off the roof. Old style metal roofs is they would have screws right here, and then what would happen is snow and ice would build up on here, and they would catch onto those screws. And then guess what happens? the snow and ice gets really heavy, it rips the screws out, and then water goes in the hole and damages your roof. So metal roofs are really nice, they last forever, they're almost indestructible, but if you have exposed fasteners, especially in a snowy condition like this, that's basically your weakest link. So the standing seam is like the mecca. It's the <laughs> mecca of metal roofs, and that's why we went with this one. It is a little labor intensive, but we've got, what, five panels up there right now, maybe six? And uh, we're about to do like seven or eight more right here, throw them in the bucket, go up and install them, and that will probably be about halfway done with the front. Nice! As far as the big panels go. Yeah. Then there's, there's some detail on the sides and some detail on the, the ridge that needs to happen, but my goal today is to just have all of the panels on the front of the roof. I think you got this. Huzzah. What you And just like that, the first half of the roof is done. They have been crushing it. It's only like noon. It's not even that late in the day. And uh, it helps that we've worked through all the kinks on the sunroom roof, the back of the roof where it was really difficult to access. And even though we're down a person and Sean was really helpful doing the back of the roof, Brandon and Trent totally know what they're doing. It's a lot easier to access the front of the roof with the man lift and a ladder. Trent is still tied off on a safety harness so everyone is taking their time, going slow, being safe, but the fact that the process has already been learned and is going so quickly is just very encouraging. So it's a good day, it's a hot day, but we're getting it done. You know, I find it really ironic that like two weeks ago probably, it was like cold Mm -hmm. And we were like, summer's over! And we're like wearing t-shirt, we're wearing like hoodies and like being scared that it was going to snow in the next week. And now it is literally like hotter than it has been all summer mm -hmm. and it's like the time to roof. It's just like, it had to happen. Like the day that we decide like, hey, let's get up on the roof, it's like BAM! 95 degrees and like no smoke to protect you, yeah. no clouds, just like the most sun. It's absolutely brutal. Yeah. And, uh, it's a good thing the roof will go pretty quickly. I'm sure like the day that we finish it'll like start raining and be <laughs> cloudy and like won't be hot. Yeah. I'm gonna head back up and start putting on more panels. Oh man, 
it's uh, it's an exciting day because we're hopefully going to finish most of the panels on the roof, but wow, is it hot. We are uh, just kind of lounging in here. I got the dogs with me. We're enjoying our new kitchen and uh, just trying to stay cool. There's not that much I can do to help on the roof. So I'm just uh, breathing through the summer heat and excited for when it starts to go away. I thought we had turned a corner and that it was like fall or like beginning of fall, but uh, that was a joke. Joke's on me. <laughs> so hopefully they can get done fairly quickly so they're not exposed on the roof all day because I know they're just baking up there. And in the meantime, I'm going to make them some food. Make sure everybody is staying hydrated and safe and well fed. And we're just gonna power through. This is a good day as any to start the rebuilding of life. The roads that lay open are many when the old ones gone under the knife. And I can feel the sun. Well, we probably still have another full day worth of working on the roof to get all of the like rake trims and the ridge cap done. It really shouldn't take a full day, but I'm just going to say that just in case it takes a full day. <laughs> I think it should only take a couple hours. But it looks really nice. Yeah, it does. When you're up there, everything like looks straight and even and professionals did. very, it's very crazy. nice. Yeah. What professionals did do. It. That's right. All right, we survived. We survived the day. It was a great day. We got almost all of the roof done. Like Trent said, we have probably a couple more hours of like finishing touches and the small details around the perimeter and the sides and the roof cap. But um, the main work is done. The hard, laborious, really exhausting work is done. And you really guys- it's just the high up stuff. Like we still got to do the ridge cap. I got to mount the chimney. We got to do some siliconing and all the all the concealed rake and stuff like that. But other than that, like, we don't have to get on the roof again. Nice. This is a problem at some time, but when we're doing the siding, we have to do like the fascia that goes on the actual fascia, the decorative fascia. And that's, that's it. Once that, once the siding is done, I'm gonna feel like we have a real house. Oh, for sure. Like, we just feel like we have such a construction site. Yeah. And like just walking outside and looking at it right now, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that looks freaking awesome. Yeah, it it's does. Like, it looks so good. Very like, transformative. Once there's siding on there, it probably won't even look like we, we built this house ourselves. I know. Our good friend John is actually coming. He is gonna help do some, um, what would you call it? Dirt work. Dirt work, erosion control, and landscaping. We have to pass a, a landscaping inspection in order to get certificate of occupancy. So as soon as that's done and the siding is on, like the outside, I guess we need stairs. And railings. <laughs> and railings. We've it's got a coming, lot to do. it's coming, it's fine. <laughs> <sighs> and the thing that really sucks is that like, I totally feel like we're out of the woods yeah. with drywall and we're not. It's just well. because like we painted the ceiling and the kitchen and the bathroom and we're like, haha, let's like put in the cabinets. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, actually we still have to kind of like finish drywalling and like paint the whole house. So baby steps, we're getting there. We still got a lot of work to do. Don't think that this is moving quickly because it's not. We're just making a lot of progress each day. So the main thing though, is that we have a great attitude about it. I think we're like enjoying the process. And like a lot of you have commented, uh, we feel the same way. Like this baby doesn't need the house. That's like a, that's a deadline we are self-imposing. The baby can be fine in the trailer. We've already spent a winter in the trailer. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a hardened baby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> anyway, we love you guys. We hope you guys know that. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios.